It's good to have you on this video. Thank you for clicking. This is my cat Leo Rex. And can you believe it? She's been in my collection since 2018. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't have much to show for because I haven't got the semi hydro set up with Lekka and her roots, her requirements quite right. And I believe five years is long enough. And I think that you would agree that five years is plenty of time to have experimented and still be grateful enough to have an orchid. Anyway, we're gonna change her media today. But there is more to this video than initially just my cat Leo Rex. Hello. <laughs> this is my Jomelia Aborescence. Oh, look at her. We have to step back a little bit. Look at this. Isn't this awesome? Just a quick clean of the leaves, you know, make the orchid look presentable because look at her in her gorgeousness. She also arrived in my collection in 2018 and she was this size. So you see, I can't stop with my cat Leo Rex or I shall lose it, but we're also gonna be working with the Jomelia and give her another pot as well. While the first two orchids are gonna be pretty straightforward, I'm going to save this one for last because it's going to need a lot more concentration and I'm not entirely sure what I am doing. This is my gorgeous Rapiculus Lelia, Lelia Lundii. You can see by her growth habit she would prefer to be mounted. I can't do that in my climate, but I have to do something because, yeah, and roots are stopping growing. This is the reason I'm apprehensive about this orchid because I'm not entirely sure if my plan is going to work out. Your opinion will be very much appreciated if you stay and watch the video. For that reason, I'm going to just ease in very slowly with the easy peasy ones and we're going to be working with lava rock and a lot of it. Credit where credit is due. My cat Leo Rex is still with me after all my attempts to get the Lekka ratio right in a semi-hydroponic setup. I do believe that the Lekka ratio with small Lekka for a seedling is perfect. What this orchid doesn't like is cold feet and that is what she gets with me during the winter months, meaning the Lekka has evaporative cooling properties. That is my biggest hurdle during the winter, the evaporative cooling. So if you're in a warmer climate and want to take a Catlia Rex and put her into semi-hydroponics, don't worry about what I'm saying because my conditions are much colder during the winter than yours possibly. You can grow a Catlia Rex in semi-hydro Hakuna Matata at all as long as your temperatures stay above 20 degrees Celsius. And let's be a little bit more specific on that point. Make sure that is the temperature of the root system in the pot, not your ambient temperatures, just to be on the safe side, you know? Anyway, enough jibber jabber. This one's pretty straightforward. We've got new root growth. She's going into the same seedling cup as before and lava rock only, as you can see. There was more resistance than I anticipated. There's more activity in the pot than I anticipated. So we'll be salvaging some of that. But this I consider now a complete reset and it's probably the fourth reset since she's arrived in my collection. So I'm not gonna mess too much with the root system. I'm just going to try and see that I get her back into one of the seedling cups as is Lekka attached and everything. Even if there's gunk on the roots. Yeah, I can cut some of the dead roots off because I do have enough of the other roots for anchoring. So we'll take care of that. And how about as I go about this, you give this video a like, that would be awesome. And if it's your first time on the channel, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. We can follow the progress of how she fares in the coming winter with just lava rock in a semi-hydroponic setup and well, the root growth and hopefully she will be a much happier orchid moving forward. So consider yourself welcome to the channel if you are new and have just subscribed. Know that you are appreciated as is everybody that has already been with me and knows the history of this orchid, which has also been riddled with scale. She came in an order that was absolutely shambles. It was diabolical and I've lost a lot of orchids from that order. I just don't want to make a habit out of it because if I can change something to turn an orchid around, even though the order and the quality of the plants were not up to standard by no means, doesn't matter. We're going to keep working. This is looking promising. 
This is not too shabby. Very pleased to see that there are some viable routes. However, I'm sticking with the evaporative cooling concept. We're stopping with that experiment. Let's put her into some fresh lava rock. So I've duct taped my holes here because we are going to be filling this little cup with water. Seeing as I don't want the lava rock to be tumbling down onto very, very delicate, sensitive belay man and bash what we still have as viable roots. Let's see where we're gonna put her. I am going to forfeit the support. She is too small, there's no need. And should we be able to repot her in like two years or three years, then she should be a little bit bigger and then we can worry about supporting any structures. Seeing as she has a viable root system that we can work with as anchoring, she's not gonna be jiggling around at all. Alrighty, now we watch, observe, wait, continue to care for this Catlia Rex and keep her scale free. Let's move on to Jomelia. While it always upsets me to lose an orchid, having a large orchid top available for my Jomelia arborescence is just a treat, I have to tell you. But before I put her into the pot, I need to show you what I'm going to try and not break. Look at this. Can we just take a moment here? <clears throat> she is in her beautiful little soap dish. That's all it is, a bathroom accessory. So much cheaper than an orchid top, but she has been doing so, so well. And this year, because I've had higher humidity this summer, look at the amount of roots she is growing out and up and over. I managed to get one into the pot. The rest will be aerial and hopefully we can admire them for a very, very long time. But yeah, while we've got them, isn't this gorgeous? I love it. Anyway, the reason I'm showing you this is because it is pretty obvious. All I'm going to do is put her into the orchid top with the soap dish and everything. I'm not going to unpot her and just fill around with lava rock while I try to fandangle the roots into, oh, the network that is the orchid top. Now, <laughs> these roots are so stiff, I do not have any aspirations of being able to bend them and put them into the dish, but maybe with future roots, we can work with that. So finally, my Jomelia arborescence does have her own orchid top, which is much deserved because she has just been so fabulous. And because she was probably going to start to get a bit top heavy, seeing as she has grown so, so much. Even though the pot is 100% lava rock, it's not going to cut it for much longer. So I'm just going to fill up around maybe just this side, just to show you what I'm planning to do. And then I can fuss with it in the days to come and add more. And I'm going to make my life so much easier just by doing it one side and then the camera doesn't have to fight whether to focus on gorgeous roots or me just filling up one little perimeter with lava rock. And I wish I had large chunky lava rock and I still have some left, but I, I don't want it to be absorbed by this project entirely. And I don't see the need at the moment to buy a brand new bag of lava rock just to get bigger chunks. So this will also do the trick for many, many years to come. Much better, <laughs> don't you think? Oh, now she looks a little bit more representative. Meanwhile, that soap dish did the trick for so many years, but now because of her size, yeah, look at that. I hope she appreciates her new five-star accommodations and continues to grow well for us in the coming years. And just because, you know, gorgeous, and I do not know a single orchid grower that has not got the hunger and desire to see beautiful orchid roots. <laughs> oh, wow. Just wow. This is amazing. How I'm going to cope with this during the winter months when she has to be inside, I do not know. It's going to have to come to me when we do the shuffle. But for now, behold and enjoy. <laughs> 
just beautiful. Also up against that green background. And you're probably thinking, why is she taking so long to get to the third orchid that I promised we were going to address in this video? That is because I'm apprehensive. <laughs> I'm stalling. <laughs> anyway, let's get to my Lundii. This orchid on a mount, oh my goodness, that would be deluxe. She is currently in gorgeous, mega active growth with new growths everywhere. And you can see my problem here. I have to address this. She's done well in Lekka and self-watering considering she's a Rapiculus Lelia. She is one of a kind. I can't put her into a square pot. It's what I've contemplated, a big square pot. But the bigger the pots get, they also get deeper, which is a problem because I don't want the roots to be having to reach for water. So my thought process here is, and bear with me while I talk you through this, <laughs> This is a bowl. You see, it's much shallower, also better for the creeping habit. However, what happens if we see nice roots in the pot where she's going to come out of? And if they're deep, I may just switch to a square pot, but then I still have the issue with those new growths dangling down. I also don't like the fact that this is a semi-hydro pot in the classic sense of the drainage holes. I wish I had the inner bowl to put her in as in self-watering because this orchid actually comes inside during the winter. And yes, you see, that makes it a bit cumbersome if I'm watering and the water is leaking out. That's why I prefer to have this specific Lelia Lundii in self-watering because she is not an outdoor candidate as are the rest of my Rapiculus Lelias. So let's have a look. See, I may change my mind halfway through. We won't know until I see how deep the roots got. Uh, anyway, deep breath. Stick with me. Let's see what we can come up with. Needless to say, she has done so well. You can see I'm so discombobulated about this project, I'm squeezing the mask. Doi! <laughs> oh, goodness me. Right. Deep breath, if you can, and let's go. I have one active root tip somewhere, and you see if there's one active root tips, the other ones want to grow as well, so let's encourage those somehow. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Here goes nothing. Got to watch the new growth crawling out here as I pull her up. Please don't break. Please don't snap on the rhizome either. Everything is precious here. Goodness me. I'm just making sure that I'm not going to go out of focus or off shot. This is delicado to say the least. Ooh la la. All kinds of words are going through my mind right now and they're not PC. <laughs> I've got to keep my eye on this side. I can't do much rotating because the moment I lift her elsewhere, I'll probably snap a growth off. Everything on the other side is looking okay. I mean, she's rooted in, so maybe I will get her a square pot, but then I'm back to the creeping out and over issue only going to be a couple of years before that happens. Whoa, you see? These don't break. I'm trying to make things better for you. Please don't break. Well, we have a good root system that would go deep. We also have some dead fern roots. <laughs> Me and fern roots. If you're new to my channel, welcome once again. I tell you, fern roots don't bother the orchid at all. They bother me. <laughs> it's just so icky. I've always been weeding this orchid. I don't want to mess with the surface too much. I have some sphagnum moss where I was tidying things over. I don't want to be cutting on the root system either. There's no need, seeing as she's going to go into inorganic media anyway. I've got a beautiful microfiber weaving up and through the root system. Let me show you. Because when she did first arrive, she was tiny and had little stubby roots like this, as you can see here. And well, yeah, I weaved up a microfiber through the lecker to bring the humidity up. So all that worked. 
but now it's not good enough. I will work with her throughout the winter in the semi-hydro bowl. I'm not putting her into another pot. I've just thought about it, that creeping habit. It's just going to be, yeah. Let her creep around in the bowl and let's see how we can go about this. I have a large lecker for the base as crocking and I can see that this worked really well for her because there's mainly large lecker in the media I put in many, many years ago. Okay, wish us luck. Or while I have her in this position, just checking for mealybugs. She's not a mealybug magnet, she is actually a scale magnet. As opposed to mealybugs, but that's okay, that's all right in there. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, stick with plan A. I've had weeks and weeks and weeks to think about this. Let's go. This will last two years. <laughs> I suppose I could cut the rhizome and then reposition, but it's too much of a fiddle that I want to deal with at this point in time. So if we have her in that pot for two years, it should be okay. Except what is going on down here with these two? You see, if I can prop this up, train her with a direction of growth. Yeah, she's gonna be settling in at the bottom of the pot as is, and I'll be moving growth as I fill with lecker. So we need duct tape and lecker. I am so glad that it is an overcast day because I've been dithering around here for a hot minute. But I also wish it wasn't an overcast day and I wish there was a warm breeze going because normally I like to clean my rhizomes. Here's my single active root tip. But with that one being there, that is also encouraging because there would be more root tips somewhere happening at some point. Kind of banking on that a little bit. Let's take all of these out. Yeah, I can't spray the rhizome down. I can't do that cleanup. The new growths are so tiny and tightly compacted. I do not want to risk losing not even one of them. And with the water in the pot, there's going to be probably some... Oh, we've got to do some mealy bugs. After all, down here. Yeah, that's not happening. I gave her a once over, but not good enough, I guess. Yeah, so you see, as I put the lecker in, I'm gonna have to watch every angle to make sure that I don't drown any of the new growths. This lead here being my major concern because of the way it's bent, but all these can now then grow upright towards the light. I'm gonna deal with the mealy bugs right now. Could also be little scale crawlers. Because if this gets wet, I won't see them, and then I will promptly forget. Something that's been happening a lot recently, forgetting things. Go to a room, stand there, and I'm like, what did I want here? Or I know I want to go get something, and then I go there, but that's not where it is because my mind is already elsewhere. Anyway, stop the dithering. Goodness me, Nina, get on with it. Whew! Just as I said that about it being overcast, here comes the sun. De -de 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 -de. Alrighty. Focusing on getting the lecker into an area where there are no new growths, so I don't bash any of them off. Yes, I have a back of an orchid, even though she's looking like a circular little thing. This is all the back. She's circling around, which is encouraging, but this lead is circling this way, this one's circling this way, and I'm going to have the light come from this way. I'm not changing her light location so as not to stress her out. You see why I said this orchid would be awesome mounted? <laughs> oh. Let's drain her first. That water level is rising. I've got some new growths tucked in, submerged. Ugh, don't like it. Maybe now. I can prop up some growths using the lecker. Fill in the nooks and crannies. Raise the rhizome. This has become a little bit of a puzzle. I knew it would be like this. I, I just knew it. And that's why I was so indecisive. You see, my first thought was to put large lecker at the bottom just for crocking and then build a little bit of a, like a mountain, a little mound of just lava rock and then have the orchid on top of the lava rock. But the root system didn't allow me to go ahead with that. This is the better option. 
and it will be less invasive as well. The media is the same. The roots that were very, very low, they are now in a reservoir. They know that environment. I have one active root tip that I keep banging on about because it is so important. It's a signal that, you know, others are on the way. And then hopefully we'll have a cute little blooming around about February, January, February. Very fragrant, gorgeous little blooms. And as I said, this orchid is a one of a kind of a rapiculus, being a bifoliate, having these grassy-like textures. That is not rapiculus-like at all. In that sense, she is unique. Now, what really is annoying me, but that's all part and parcel of what's going on here, you can see this lead right here. There's a gorgeous new growth coming here, which was submerged, so I removed all the sheaths on the previous growth so that they don't stay wet and decrease any chance of this rotting out. Thankfully, a little bit of sun has come out. It's quite late in the day already though, so I've been, I've been messing around with this longer than what I've got on camera, just to be 100% sure that I kind of like what I'm doing, that I'm convinced this is gonna be okay and I can be comfortable with it. Don't wanna be doing this again anytime soon. And what is gonna be unfortunate for the orchid is that I am going to stress her because I will be changing the direction of light. You can see everything is growing away from us. That's because the light source was over there. Hello, here's my hand. I'm gonna to have to now, considering the way she's positioned in the pot, move her light source to where we are so that she starts then to grow more into this area. I mean, I've got two leads coming this way. This new growth here could come upright. There's another one tucked in there also with a different light direction could all come this way. I do not like to do this at all. Orchids that have their light direction changed, they also exude a tremendous amount of energy because they need to change the direction of the leaves. Well, c'est la vie, mon ami. I can't see any way other than mounting this orchid to get this done and hopefully have her continue to be so vigorous for us. She was really in desperate need of a repot. Our root tip is right here. She was in desperate need of a repot. I was in desperate need of finding an insert, a bowl for this, so I waited more than a year now that I've been looking for an insert bowl. The time has come. Now watch, just because I've done it, I'm gonna find a bowl of this size. That's crazy. <laughs> That's gonna really annoy me, but anyway. So we're gonna work with her as is. We're gonna change her light direction and we're going to fill her reservoir with fertilizer. And then we are going to observe how she performs and how she handles this. I don't see why she shouldn't do well, really. But we're dealing with orchids, you know? There's always that. <laughs> we're dealing with orchids. They have a mind of their own. Bless them, love them. Sometimes it's like, oh, what do you want me to do with you? What, what, uh? And it's probably saying, I want to be out in nature on a beautiful piece of bark, on a beautiful tree with a lot of shade, a lot of airflow temperatures that I like. I don't want to be moving inside. Give me dappled light and I'll be happy. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. I am keeping you contained here and not letting you grow to your beautiful, full, normal as should be potential. So please forgive me and please stay because I loves you. <laughs> Can you tell I'm not 100% convinced? <laughs> ah! <laughs> And I'm still seeing some exposed roots, but oh my goodness, I so appreciate it if you stayed to the end. Thank you so, so much. Now, as mentioned at the beginning, yeah, give me your thoughts about this orchid here and my decision-making process as I went about assessing what I was planning to do as opposed to what it turned out to be. Let me know what you think. Even if you disagree with my decision-making process, your feedback is always so appreciated because maybe it'll work out for my Lundi eye and I, and then we can all learn from that. Or if it doesn't, at least at the bottom of this video, there will be suggestions on how to do it better. I did say also that I was gonna use a lot, a lot of lava rock because of this project. Turns out, not that much, so I will retract that statement. <laughs> but that's great for my lava rock stash, I can tell you that much, that is great. 
But I do believe that if the light direction now changes and comes from here, she should be okay. And with that, fingers crossed, <laughs> toes crossed, whatever you can cross, please cross that. And once again, thank you so, so much for being here. Your support is just amazing. I wish you a wonderful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.